What's up, Go-Getters? I'm really, really excited to be kicking off this series, the subscription box sprint. This is going to be a series. I'm going to be dropping some videos. I'm going to try to drop them every week, but I do take off from my channel on certain weeks. So if we skip, you know, a week or two, we definitely will come back until we are finished the series. So the purpose of this series is to help people who really want to get started with this income strategy to be able to earn some amazing income and build a profitable subscription box business. This training is going to be geared towards beginners. So it's going to be geared towards helping you to get your subscription box business off the ground as quickly as possible. Guys, when I started my business, I literally just decided that I was just going to get it off the ground within a month. So I gave myself 30 days to get it started. So if you want to take this training and use it to launch your subscription box very, very quickly, it definitely can be done. And it's completely up to you whether or not you want to sprint through starting your subscription box or take your time and plan things out. Everybody moves at a different pace, so it's all good. So today our focus on part number one is gonna be what you should know before starting your subscription box business. So just as a quick introduction, most of you guys know me, who I am. My name is Dallas Gordon. I'm a business mentor. I have been mentoring business owners and entrepreneurs for 10 plus years now. I've been in business for even longer. Um, I've started many different businesses all online. My latest venture, we just crossed three years, and that's my subscription box business as well as my stationary store called the Journal Junk Box. Um, so I mainly run my subscription box business guys that's what i do these days um, i like to give back so i pump out a lot of content onto my youtube channel i also put a lot of motivational content out on the internet as well and i pretty much just run my business otherwise that's all i for the most part these days have time for is to run my business you know, enjoy my family. And I like to, at this point in my life, just pump out as much content as possible to give back as much as possible. So with my subscription box business, again, um, we've been around for three years now. The name of the business is The Journal Junk Box. We have a sister company called DG Journal Co., which is pretty much my liquidation strategy. We'll, we'll get more into that later on another training video. But um, I've been in this industry for three years now. There have been some ups and downs. I'm going to keep it real. You know, some of it's been great. Some of it's been, ugh, you know, some of it's made me go gray at times, but it's been very profitable. Um, it's been very rewarding um, to have this business and we're growing every day. And I've also been growing inside of my business. So I feel like, guys, your business will never grow as it, it'll never grow further than you are willing to grow. So the beautiful thing about becoming a top earner and growing your business is that you actually have to grow as an individual. You actually have to allow your character to grow along with the business. So with me doing that with the help of God, because God always comes first in my life. So I always have to put that out there. I've been able to successfully continue to grow this business. So it's been nothing but a blessing. And I am super excited to share what I know with you. So what you're going to learn today, guys, is I'm going to be talking all about what you need to know before starting a subscription box. I wanted to kind of start here so that we could build a foundation to go into the rest of the training. So what you're going to learn today is pretty much what you need to know before you get your feet wet and jump all in. Um, so I kind of want to just cover the foundation and basics today. So number one, we're going to talk about the naked truth about running a subscription box business. We are going to cover the pros and cons of doing it. Number two, what you need to get started. And number three, what you should know before starting. So guys, definitely take your pens and paper out, take your notes, you know, follow along and all that good stuff. And we're going to get in to it. So before we get into it, guys, I thought I had a slide about this. I'm pretty sure I do. I'm probably talking ahead. But what I do want you to do is a few things. If you want to get more training like this, what I want you to do is get fully connected with me. You don't want to miss anything. So you want to subscribe to this channel, 
hit the notification bell. You learned something you like, definitely please share it out. Please comment under the video. Let me know that you're following along and that you're getting something out of this content. Don't forget to join my Telegram community. It is free. That's where I'm going to be dropping workshop, um, worksheets, resources, all that good stuff for the training. And definitely also get on my email list as well so you don't miss anything just to be transparent my email list is a mixture of business and faith-based content because i have both i'm um, both two channels and everything is merged so if you're okay with both definitely get on my email list the way you're going to do that is by going into the description box and downloading my free gift which is the video vault which is going to give you like a massive spreadsheet of all my videos so that you can sort the spreadsheet by topic and learn whatever you want so value, 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 value being given here. So please, in exchange for the value, I just ask that you get yourself fully connected. So what is a subscription box business? That's where we're going to start. So a subscription box business is a model where customers pay a recurring fee to receive a box of products or goods delivered to them on a regular basis, typically monthly, you know, or quarterly. So one thing that I do want to put out here is that your subscription box business does not have to be delivered in a box. One of the questions that I get asked all the time is, does it have to be in a box in order for it to be a subscription box business? I know it's called a box business, but it does not have to be in a box. As a matter of fact, if you deliver it in a in different type of packaging, like lighter packaging and weight, you will actually be able to save on cost doing that and customers don't mind. So don't feel like because it's called a subscription box business and it actually has to be delivered in a physical box. Why a subscription box business? So I wanna cover the benefits of having a subscription box business. So benefit number one is gonna be reoccurring revenue. You are gonna get paid on whatever interval you set your business up on. The typical model is monthly. So you will get paid for the work that you do every single month reoccurring. You're getting that repeat business. You don't have to always worry about new customers and stuff like that. You're getting that repeat business every single month. Benefit number two is gonna be customer loyalty. Your customers are gonna be very loyal to you because you're not just selling them one-off products. You are talking to them and, and staying in front of them every single month. You are delivering them a product every single month. You are curating a special selection of products just for them and with that relationship building happens and with that repeat buys happen so it creates a very amazing beautiful relationship between you and your customer and benefit number three is scalability it gives you the opportunity to really be able to scale and grow your business as long as that business is structured correctly you will be able to scale that business so those are going to be the three top benefits, I would say, but I'm pretty sure that there are plenty others as well. So how does it work? So let me give you a, a process overview. So if you're like, I don't know if I want to get started or I can't wrap my mind around how I'm going to make this work every month. Let me give you just a quick overview of how it works. So first, every month you are going to focus on pre-selling and marketing. So especially if you are brand new, that's what's beautiful about this business. You don't need like a ton of funds to get started because you're pretty much just going to curate like sample pictures and things like that of your box. And we'll get more into this on another lesson as we go through this training, but you're going to actually be pre-selling your box. That's what most people do. Instead of, you know, getting in bed with like, tons and tons of products before you know how many you're going to sell you're going to sell your boxes up front and my business is still at this stage where for the most part we're we're, we're pre-selling i mean we're buying before people actually pay us actually at this stage in my business but it still seems similar to pre-selling so you're going to be pre-selling this amazing box you're going to be marketing the box so that you can put it in front of as many customers as possible from there as you get those buys you know you're going to be product sourcing so you're going to be um, searching your suppliers inventory list and things like that to find products you're going to be curating products for your box you're going to be giving them experience it may be like there's an amazing mystery box out there um, and that's how they curate theirs there's beauty boxes there are all kinds of boxes and we'll get more into that but you're going to be sourcing and finding products that are going to be a great fit for that next month's box once you order those products now we're going to move down to inventory management now when that those products come in you and your team you're going to have to count what comes in to make sure everything's there make sure nothing's broken and then you're going to, going to want to stock everything away and get everything ready for your packing day and then once you do that 
when it's time to ship out the boxes, you have packing and shipping day. That's when you and your team are going to, you know, assemble all the boxes. You're going to put everything inside, close them, package them, put labels on them and ship them out. So this is just a quick overview of how this process works behind the scenes. So what makes a successful subscription box business? What would make you successful? Number one is going to be a unique value proposition. What does that mean? That means how valuable are you to your market? How valuable is your box to your market? This is how valuable people consider you to be and how unique that value proposition is. So you need to stand out and you need to be extremely valuable to your customer. That's number one. Number two is going to be quality products. You don't want to like put a bunch of Dollar Tree products in, this, you know, in a box and anybody can just go get themselves and think that that's going to be a successful <laughs> subscription box situation. I've seen videos on YouTube. I'm not knocking anybody, but I've seen videos. I've seen people pretty much curating their boxes and putting Dollar Tree items in their boxes, cheap items in their boxes. Please do not do that. I don't believe that that makes for longevity of success. If some most people who want this kind of product are looking for a pretty much of a quality product, I know quality is relative, but they're looking for something that's quality. They're, they're not just looking for something they can go down the street to Walmart and get themselves. So effective marketing is going to be number three. Um, it's a huge, huge part of making your business work is going to be effectively marketing your business out there. Number four is excellent customer service. So you want to make sure that you are giving a superb customer service experience, that you are training your team on what your values are, how you like to treat people, how you like to walk away. Um, you, you like your customers to walk away feeling anytime they engage and come in contact with your business. That's going to be number four. Number five is effective processes in order fulfillment. So you want to have certain processes in place that are helping your business to run smoothly. And then you're going to want to make sure that you are filling orders and you are organized with that. And once you grow to scale, it takes a lot of organization and certain processes to make that work because that has everything to do with customer satisfaction and retention. So if you are messing up and missing things and everything is screwed every single month, not that you won't make mistakes, it can make for a really, really negative customer experience and people may not want Want to stay. So number six, of course, is going to be financial growth and stability. Do you have a business that realistically can work and realistically can grow and be stable for the long term? And that's going to be number six. So your big box idea, let's talk about what that needs to include when you are coming up with the idea for your box. And we're going to be, you know, talking more about that in the coming weeks where I'm going to be helping you. And this may even run throughout the holidays, guys, because we're almost to November, but I'm going to be talking more about, you know, developing your idea, niche research, how to put all that together, what type of things that you should think about when you're doing that in the next coming weeks. But you need to do your market research, just loving a particular thing or being passionate about a particular thing won't get it, guys. You really have to do your research to make sure. And I'm going to be honest, guys, with my subscription box business, I feel like I got really, really blessed. I feel like I had a God idea because I didn't do a lot of research when I got started. So I just kind of was like, oh, I love to journal. Other people like to journal. It was just kind of like something I thought I should do a long time ago when I finally took my shot at it. And I had no idea that it was like a huge community behind this stuff or like people were super fanatic about this stuff. And I'm going to be honest, like it took me actually getting into having a business before I even learned more about the people and what they wanted. And, you know, lots of things I was I just didn't know about my own niche, about my own industry. A lot of that can be avoided, guys, if you just do your research up front. So you need to have a profitable idea. And that ties back into market research. You need to find evidence that people are actually buying what it is that you want to sell them and that the right people are buying what you want to sell them because you want to make sure that these are people who are willing to spend on your product. And then some success examples, guys, there's a mystery box out there that has caught my eye that actually puts together mysteries every month. So people who are really, really super into mysteries can solve problems and things like that and get clues and each box kind of runs into the next so that that kind of stuff does really really well there are some amazing pet boxes out there I know my mentor has a huge um, pet box overseas and they're killing the game so that's an amazing niche because people are, will always have a need 
to feed their pets, give their pets toys. People have a really, really great relationship with their pets. There are some bridal boxes out there. There will always be people getting married. So people get really excited about that kind of stuff. There's the bump box that is specifically for pregnant women. Then they also have another side that is specifically for the baby once the baby gets here. So people will always be getting pregnant and people will always want to celebrate that special time in their life. So I feel like boxes like that never go out of style because people are always going to want to do it. For me and my company, guys, we still have a good amount of growing to do, but we've done a lot of amazing growth over the last three years. Um, with my boss, guys, my selling point is more therapeutic. Where journaling is more therapeutic, we're encouraging people to be able to write their thoughts down on paper, get creative, and prioritize some self-care time for themselves. So ours is more from a self-care standpoint. We also now have one for kids. So you want to make sure that your big idea, when you do the market research, you want to make sure that you see evidence that it can have a huge success rate. The demand for your product will never end. You want to make sure that there will always be a demand for whatever it is that you're selling. So getting started, guys, I have a special checklist for you guys to be able to get started. Once again, it's inside of the Telegram. Um, you can join the Telegram completely for free. If you don't have the app, you can download it to your computer or your mobile device. You get inside the Telegram. I'm going to be dropping free resources each and every time I drop a training, guys. So you want to be inside of there to get access to this checklist. So I want to go over the checklist really quickly. This is the way that the checklist is going to look. This is a resource that I'm actually dropping, guys, this week. It's a Subbox Kickstarter checklist. These are going to, it's going to include the necessary tools and resources you need to get your subscription box off the ground. The checklist has a startup checklist here. It also includes a pre-launch checklist. So it's gonna, this is in advance to what we'll be talking about in the coming weeks. And it also includes a resources sheet. So I'll probably be sharing a lot more resources, guys, because this was created some time ago, probably last year or sometime like that. So I could probably share more resources with you guys, but this is all put together for you to help you to be able to get started. And we're kind of working ahead here, but this is the resource sheet that I'm going to be dropping inside of the Telegram. So all you have to do is go inside of the app and I'll post a link there and then you can download this checklist from there. But just to kind of go over our getting started checklist, what we're looking at is your research. You're going to want to outline your idea on paper study other boxes in your niche, study your potential audience behaviors and develop your customer avatar, identify the need in your niche and how you will meet the need, decide on business startup funds. And I'm just reading over this quickly, guys, because we're going to be like focusing on some of this stuff in the weeks to come and digging a bit more deeper in some of it. But this is what is on the checklist to get started. You're going to research and communicate with suppliers. You're going to search and price packaging options. Subscribe to your favorite boxes just so that you could see, you know, firsthand what people are offering, what things are looking and feeling like. I always like to study my competitors. You have budgeting and staging, list cost of packaging and products, fulfillment center, um, or you're going to ship yourself, which you're going to use, comparing your shipping um, and, and pricing and choosing the best shipping company. Decide on box packaging type. Is it going to be mailers or boxes? Then deciding on box design, are you going to go the cheaper route or are you going to get a custom design? And I'm going to be giving you suggestions from my own experiences with that. Um, list all costs and determine box budget and price. Decide on box shipping costs. Decide on box name. Order packaging and product samples. And stage your sample box and take photos. So the, this is your getting started checklist. You're going to go inside the Telegram. You're going to be able to download this today and find this resource inside of there. So we're going to go back to the presentation. I just wanted to kind of quickly go over what that looks like. Now, how much do you need to get started, guys? Now, there is no one answer to this. So I had a couple of thousand dollars put away for my business when I first started because I had another business that could fund this business. But everybody does not have that situation. You can get started with as little as $500 to $1,000 is what I would suggest. I would not suggest getting started with zero guys because you may have to order some things like you may have to grab like a professional photo shoot of your sample boxes. You may have to order samples. You may have to order products from some of your vendors to see the quality of things. So if you're starting with zero, you're not going to be able to really put your best foot forward. 
I would never suggest that you start any business with zero dollars. I just wouldn't. I would I would hope that you would have some startup funds. I believe you could start as little as 500 to a thousand dollars. So how long does it take to get started? Guys, as I said, I sprinted my way into my subscription box business within 30 days, probably 28 days I was up and running and I had got it started. So it could be as short or as long as you want it to be, of course, Make sure that you, you know, go through all the crucial steps that you need to, to make sure that you are setting the right foundation for your business, but it definitely can get started in a month or less if that's what you choose to do, if you're really serious about getting started. So let me know in the comments, do you have a subscription box? Have you started yet? Do you plan on starting? When do you plan on starting? What is your commitment to get started? So let's look at the pros, guys, of owning your own subscription box business. I just listed three top pros here of owning your own subscription box business. Number one is a steady income. So you're getting those monthly subscriptions in or whatever your payment interval is that you choose. You can expect that income. Of course, people leave. So, you know, subscription boxes, that's the only ups and down thing. We'll talk about that next. But you can rely, the income is just more reliable than selling one-off products. Number two is of course your customer loyalty, your customer loyalty and your repeat buys. We sort of talked about this guys when we went over the benefits. This is also a pro of having a subscription box business because you are, you're building this amazing relationship, this trustworthy relationship with your customers. You have no problem really selling anything. You have no problem like we were our company has no problem selling anything to our customers our customers are amazing and they're happy to buy from us so we're always in front of them and we're always providing that great experience for them them every month so we're constantly nurturing that relationship even when things go wrong and we give them good customer service we're constantly nurturing that relationship so that that that's a win-win for you and your customer and then number three is scalability. The ability that you have to be able to grow and scale and continue to earn higher and higher income and build a solid business and employ other people and live a life of financial freedom. All of that is possible with this business. So the cons, guys, just to be aware of is startup costs. Like um, I would just say, you know, start with something. Some people really just don't have the funds to start a business right now, I would not suggest that this is a business that you start just like with no money. I know there are people who have done it and there are success stories of people who have started with zero, but I just don't suggest that. Number two is cash flow. Over time, this business can definitely be a bit of a cash, uh, <laughs> what am I looking for? Cash cow or a ca cash hog or it sucks up the cash. So you cash flow can really be an issue um, for subscription box businesses, just having enough cash flow to be able to cover expenses. A lot of money is going out all over the place. It can be really hard figuring out what works for your business. There is no cookie cut strategy and money management strategy because all these different subscription box businesses out here are structured a million different ways and we all work differently. So it's hard to streamline the process of getting more cash flow into your business. Of course, me or someone else could give you tips for how to get more cash flow into your business and we can give you suggestions based on what's worked for us but because every single subscription box business is so different and so unique there's no like cookie cut strategy for getting more um, cash flow into your business so it becomes challenging it can become very challenging and take a lot of hard work to get the numbers right Number three is gonna be customer churn. Churn, guys, is basically when your customers cancel and leave. People cancel for many different reasons, whether that's failed payments or whether they're just opting out. They don't wanna pay for your box anymore. That is like a constant uphill battle because it's almost like you grow and then you lose people. You grow and then you lose people. So trying to stay ahead of that curve can be challenging at times, especially if you have limited advertising dollars. So that can be one of the cons. So let me know, guys, if you've gotten something out of this in the comments. Let me know what you learned, what your takeaways are. We got through this relatively quickly. I'm surprised. So what's next, guys? Number one is join the Telegram. I'll be sure to share that link in the comments. Um, be sure to join and say hello once you do. Number two is get on my email list. The only way, guys, that you can get on my email list is by downloading, uh, not downloading, by opting in to the video vault, which is going to be great for you because you'll be able to search hundreds of videos. It's all organized for you. 
um, to be able to watch those videos and get educated in your business, as well as faith-based content and spiritual content as well. Just be aware that if you're not a person that likes to hear about God, hear about faith-based content, you may not want to join my email list or Telegram because both, both are shared there. And I want to be transparent about that. And number three is to subscribe to my YouTube channel because and hit that notification bell, guys, because I'm going to be talking about more of this and I'm going to be adding more trainings and dropping more resources over the next weeks. So guys, thank you so much for watching this training. I hope you got a lot out of it and be blessed. See you guys on the next one.